skin a marink a dink a dink skin a marink a do I love you or did I hate you you're gonna have to listen to the review and find out welcome to the return of buddy's house of horror podcast and welcome to my review initial reactions thoughts about skin a marink the 2022 indie horror low budget phenomenon that's been taking over the internet and taking it over by storm and we're gonna get right to the review i hope you guys enjoy it i hope you guys enjoy the return of buddy's house of horror podcast i know it's been a minute if you guys haven't already please make sure you're subscribing to the show over on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you guys get the show, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button, turning on notifications so you know when new episodes come out. And with that, we're just going to get right to the show. So now let's get spooky. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the return of Buddy's House of Horror podcast. I know it's been a minute. I hope you guys have been doing very well. This is the first show of 2023. I hope the end of everyone's 2022s went very, very well. I hope you guys had a great holiday season, whatever holidays you celebrate. Hope everyone had a happy new year. Hope everyone has been doing well in the first upcoming you know, weeks of 2023. It is now February 2023. I didn't even have a show in January. Although I am recording this in January, this show is going to be released on February 2nd, a momentous day, the day that Skinamarink is going to begin streaming on Shudder. And Skinamarink is a film that is going to be very hard to talk about. It's going to be a film that's very hard to review to discuss. There's a lot of opinions about this film already, and it's a wide range of opinions, a very big spectrum of what people are thinking about this film, Skinamarink. I've seen some people who I'm friends with on Letterboxd rate it half a star. I've seen some four and a halfs. I've seen some fives. I've seen a lot of things in the middle, a very, very diverse range of opinions about this film. A very uncomfortable film, no doubt about it. A very uncomfortable film to talk about. It gets you out of your comfort zone, just like I'm out of my comfort zone recording this podcast. This podcast has been several weeks in the making because it's been several weeks since I've seen the film, but my life has been a little bit of a whirlwind since then. And you know, I'm just taking a moment. I am just gonna come out there and I'm in an uncomfortable situation. I'm in an uncomfortable room of my house. I'm recording in a room that I haven't really recorded in very, very often. Um, and I guess I can tell the story of why that is in a little bit. I'm wearing an outfit that I'm not typically comfortable wearing. As you guys know, I'm sort of a black on black kind of guy. And I'm wearing, wearing a very colorful sweater at the moment with a sunrise on it. It's purple, it's blue, it's green. All colors that I never wear. It's got a big sun on it. Um, it's sunshine, it's happiness. It's very, very different from what I wear in my day-to-day -day life. And this episode is just about getting out of your comfort zone. I always have to be in a certain mood to record. I have to be in a certain setting, atmosphere, a certain mind space in order to record. And today I basically said, screw all of that. I need to sit down. I need to record this thing. I need to get out of this basically winter depression mindset that I've been in. And I just need to talk about a very depressing, foreboding, atmospheric, creepy film called Skinamarink. And we're gonna get to that in just a quick second. But first I wanna tell the story of, you know, my theater going experience, how the anticipation really took hold of me to see this film. I had heard about it a couple months back, back when it was first making, you know, its festival run, and it got leaked online. I completely ignored it. I didn't want anything to do with the leaks of the film. I wanted to see it legit because that's just how I am. I'm not going to pirate a film and watch it. That's just not the kind of person I am. But I did hear about it way back when in 2022, a few months back, and I heard it was coming to theaters for a select, you know, quick run in theaters and I wasn't able to go see it the weekend that it was out and I was freaking out about it and I was checking theaters like constantly like when is a showing of Skinner going to pop up when am I going to be able to see this film it finally popped up that they were going to have it at a theater by my house 
on the weekend where I was off work. I was like, perfect timing. I can't wait to go see this film. Me and my wife went, bought tickets for us. Everything was going according to plan. And then my wife started to run a little late coming home. And I got a little bit nervous. And I was like, what is going on? And I check her location. And she is actually down the street from my house. And I'm just like, what the hell? And needless to say, she ends up calling me at this moment. And she says that she has found a cat. And she had pulled over on the side of the road to aid the cat. And as you guys know, the House of Horror is in Cleveland, Ohio. Very foreboding weather this time of year. The snow was coming down. It was a dreary winter night in January when this was happening. She sees this cat on the side of the road and... She's talking to it, trying to get it to come over. And while I'm on the phone with her, she is actually able to get the cat into the car. As soon as she opens up one of the car doors, the cat runs into the car, jumps into the car. And now there is a cat in the car when we're on our way to go see Skinnamarink. And I'm stressing out. So she pulls into the driveway. She's got a cat in a car. I'm freaking out because we need to leave soon to go see this film. But unfortunately, there is an approximately nine-month-old kitten in my wife's car. And as you guys know, we have two cats of our own, Pumpkin and Moon, who, you know, are the gargoyles of our house. They protect this house. They're very predatory of this house. So what we do, we take the cat who is another black cat. He looks exactly like Moon. In fact, the first few days before we gave him a name, we were calling him Mr. Moon Jr. That was him. He was Mr. Moon Jr. Get the cat carrier, put Mr. Moon Jr. in the cat carrier, subtly and quickly, but subtly, run the cat into the house, put the cat upstairs, and that is where the cat has been for like two weeks. This cat is still in our house. Um, we took it to the vet. We got it shots. We're referring to him now as Binky, although that is not probably his permanent name. We've been referring to him as Binky, and he's still in our house. Um, he's got his shots. He's ready to go. We need to get him neutered and stuff. Um, there was no doubt that he was a boy. Um, I'll leave it at that. Um, but he needs to get neutered. He's got his medicines. He's got his vaccines. He's all good to go. And we're going to be introducing him to our cats sometime soon. Hopefully within the next few days, we're able to introduce him to our current cats who still kind of don't even really know that he's up there, but he's been up there for a while and he almost put my chances of seeing Skidamarink in jeopardy had getting him into the house and that whole process not going according to plan. It would have put my chances of seeing Skidamarink deeply in jeopardy. But fortunately, everything worked out fine. We were able to go see the film. We were walking into the film as one of the last trailers was ending. It always makes me nervous. I need to get to the theater in time to, you know, I like to have my popcorn, my drink, sit down. I like to watch all the trailers. If I don't get there, like, I am very stressed about missing the beginning of a film. But thankfully, we were able to get there. Everything was fine before the film started. So I'm very, very fortunate for that. I'm fortunate that Binky is in our house at this time, in our possession, and not on the streets. Of course... Once we found him, we put up like lost cat signs all over um, our street in the neighborhood and the few streets around, posted them on Facebook and then some on on some websites where people like are trying to lo uh, look for their lost and found cats and stuff like that. We haven't heard any responses yet. Um, so I, until then, we're just going to kind of keep Binky here, introduce him to our cats, see how that goes. And we might have a third cat on our hands. Um, I wanted to name him Skinnamarink. I think that would have been the perfect name to name him because every time I think of Skinnamarink, I think of this cat. And every time I think of this cat, I'm going to think about the time that I went to go see Skinnamarink because it was within minutes of each other this was happening. Um, it was like an 8 o'clock show, and we got there at like 8.15-ish. So the trailers were wrapping up, but I was very, very nervous we were going to miss the beginning part of this film. And yeah, as I said at the beginning of this, this is a different environment for me to be recording, so I'm hoping this sounds okay. I'm actually recording this on a different microphone than I normally record. I'm trying some things out. I haven't been able to really dive too much into this microphone and get it to sound good, so it probably sounds just as crappy as my other microphone. But hopefully with some fine tuning, I'll be able to get this microphone sounding pretty good, hopefully. 
that's my goal. If not, there's not going to be much of a difference between using the old microphone, so then I guess I have two microphones that kind of sound like crap. But now that we've gotten through my long-winded intro about going to see Skinnerink, I'm just going to go and talk about the film. I'm going to try to keep this spoiler free. Again, it comes out on streaming today, so hopefully you guys are able to check it out today. But before we go into the film, I just want to give you guys the precaution that this is a film you need to give your attention to. This is a film that you can't be watching and playing on your phones, you can't have distractions, you can't have a bunch of friends over in the room talking. This film, you need to be invested in it in order for the film to work. You need to give into the film, you need to buy into the film. Just like pro wrestling, you need to buy into what they're doing. With Skinner Marink, you need to buy into what they are doing. Because otherwise, you're going to be like all of these reviews online that are giving it half a star. And it's fine if you don't like the film for some of the valid reasons that I've seen people not liking the film. But it's not fair to dislike the film because you weren't watching it the way that you should be watching it. I watched it in theaters. I think it was a great experience to see in theaters. It was one of my most memorable theater-going experiences that I've ever had. Um, and we'll talk about that when we get more in-depth about things. But this, you need to give the film a legit chance. You can't go in with a negative mindset. You can't go in with preconceived notions about it. You need to have it just be what the film is and accept it for what the film is. Um, I guess that's just my precaution. So I caution you, if you're going to watch this at home, to make it like it's a theater. Make it as dark as possible. Don't talk. Don't have your phone. Just completely engross yourself into the film. I think seeing it in a theater is a perfect way to see it. I think seeing it at home alone in the right atmosphere could put you in the perfect situation to perfectly buy into the film if you are willing to do so. So I'm going to try to keep this as spoiler-free as possible. There will be some things I'm getting into. Uh, maybe towards the end, I will get into some deep spoilers. So if you guys want to turn the episode off at a certain point, I will give you a warning that I'll be talking about the final kind of moments of the film. Um, just so if you don't want the ending ruined for you, I don't think really it will affect your viewing experience of it very much, even if you do have some spoilers. But just as a precaution, I will give you guys a warning towards the end if I decide to sort of talk about the ending portions of the film. But we're just going to get right into the film. Again, I was very, very excited to go see it, very anxious to see it. This is the first film that I can remember in a long time where I was constantly checking like every single day to see if there was a screening like a week in advance, like always constantly checking to see if there was a screening. And then the first available one, the first available time I was able to go, that's when I went. I can't remember, at least in recent memory, that happening with a film. Um, it's always like, oh, if I see it opening day, opening weekend, that's fine. And I know it's something that I'm going to see for a while. With this, at the time I saw it, it didn't even really have like a streaming release date. Um, but now it does, and that it comes out today. So, without further ado, we're just going to get right into the film. I know this was a pretty bit um, long of an intro, but you guys are used to that. You guys are here for me. This is my show. You're here to listen to me talk. Everything else is secondary, I hope. Actually, that should be primary. I'm hoping that's why you guys clicked on this, but I'm hoping some of you clicked on it because you're a fan of my stuff and you like me. So before we go and talk about the film, I just want to remind you guys, if you haven't already, to please subscribe to the show wherever you're listening to the show, whether it be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, um, Pocket Casts, wherever you're listening to the show on your podcast streaming sites, make sure you're clicking that subscribe button and turning on some sort of notification so you know when my new episodes come out. If you're watching it the old school way on YouTube, make sure you're subscribing to my channel and again, turning on notifications so you know when new episodes come out. If you're able to share this episode with some people who might be interested in seeing Skinnamarink, I suggest you send this episode their way. Um, and anyone who just likes my show in general, help me spread the good word about the House of Horror. It really means a lot to me. Follow me on social media and all of that great stuff. All the links are in the description. And with that, we're going to take a quick pause for the cause, and then we'll be talking about Skinnamarink. But first... 
Are you tired of plain old breakfast? Cereal is not sugary enough. Are you tired of burnt pancakes and waffles? Then you need slapjacks. The slap will get your face and cause a chemical reaction to heat off. No cooking required, just slap and eat. Don't believe us? Here's a satisfied customer. Slapjacks are the best breakfast food ever made. Slapjacks, slap those smiles back. <laughs> You heard it here, kids. Slapjack saves lives. Order at www.slapjacks.com. All right, we're back at it. So Skinnamarink, the film that has been very polarizing between the horror fan base over the last couple of weeks. Again, I hope this microphone sounds good. I hope that the room I'm in sounds good. I guess I didn't give context as to why I'm in a different room, but I kind of alluded to it. But Binky has taken over the entire upstairs of my house, my recording studio, all of that stuff for the time being, and he's a very needy cat. Had I tried recording this podcast up there, the cat would have pressed stop on the keyboard a hundred times. He would have been walking all over the keyboard, walking all over the me, uh, all over me, all over the microphone. You would have heard him like, meow, meow, constantly. Like, Binky is a needy cat, and I get it. I mean, he's lonely up there. I mean, he has the whole upstairs to himself. I mean, we go up there, like, we spend, like, a couple hours with him every day. But he, until he's introduced to the other cats, like, he's going to be very lonely and needy. So I, that's part of why it took me so long to record this thing, because I can't really go into my normal recording space to record stuff. So I finally was able to, you know, bring stuff down here, get things ready to go, in order to record. Um, again, very uncomfortable situation for me recording down here, but we're gonna see how it goes. This might be my new recording space. We will see. So we're gonna talk about Skinamarink. I'm drinking a starry lemon-lime caffeine-free soda. Of course, they discontinued Sierra Mist a couple weeks ago and replaced it with this starry. Um, I, we got like a 12 pack of it or whatever, just to try it. Um, I mean, I, I like it. It's fine. I, it's not as good as Sprite. Um, but it is caffeine free. So it gives me the illusion that I'm getting energized when really I'm not. Um, well, I mean, I guess you are cause of like the sugars and stuff that I would imagine are in it, but there's no like traditional caffeine, but it makes me feel like I'm drinking caffeine. It's a placebo, you know, like a decaf or a non-alcoholic beer or something. You get that little placebo effect when you're drinking this caffeine free starry. Um, so I'm just going to open this up real fast. I want, I'm curious to see how this sounds on the new microphone. I hope that sounded good. I hope that wasn't too loud. It kind of looked like it was peaking, but it's fine. That's how we roll on Buddy's House of Horror podcast. Take a sip for the working man. Try to spill a minimal amount on myself, but still spill quite a bit on myself. That's how these things go. Sip number two. We're going to put that down before I make any more of a mess. Skinnamarink. Let's get right to it. I guess we'll talk about the plot. We'll talk about the log line of the film, which really, it kind of sums it up the perfect way to sum it up without really giving anything away, but also telling you exactly what is happening. Two children wake up in the middle of the night to find their father is missing and all the windows and doors in their home have vanished. This film was directed by Kyle Edward Ball, um, who's obviously a very big horror fan. You can tell at least a big fan of, you know, stuff that's more experimental. He's an experimental filmmaker. This is an experimental film. And it kind of became a hit accidentally, right? Like, as I said, it had a festival run, leaked online. They uploaded it to YouTube, torrent sites, etc., all that great stuff. Um, eventually, it was picked up by Shudder and given that small run in theaters like we were talking about. And it, especially in comparison to its budget, which was about like $15,000 crowdfunded, it's made like an unthinkable amount of money like based on that in today's like modern world um and it's made like oh, like almost two million i want to say like at this point um it's found footage style like analog vhs kind of style but it's not found footage like it's not like your blair witch projects your paranormal activities right where you're like watching it 
later on. It's not really found footage at all. Like, it's not like there's anyone walking around with a camera, like cameras aren't, like, mentioned or anything. That's just sort of the aesthetic of the film. It's just, like, a found footage aesthetic. It's not actually found footage, which I think was a very interesting idea. Um, you never really get a good look at anything for the majority of this film, right? Everything's cast in shadows. Everything is dark. It really puts you in a point of view as a child. Ironically, the only thing you see in the film that's good and close up are the cartoons that the kids are watching, right? I mean, I'm in the same way as when I was a kid, always paying attention to what's going on on the TV and not what's going on in the rest of my life or in my household. I don't know if that was intentional by the filmmakers or not, but the only thing you really see clearly are the cartoons in this. <laughs> um, everything else is kind of, you know, there's a dark, like, ambiance and intrigue of mystery. Everything's dark. Obviously, it's taking place, like, at night over the course of several nights, I would imagine. Um, not giving anything away. Um, there's lots of stuff in this that is making things scary that would be scary to a child, right? Or making things scary that you wouldn't typically think of it being scary. Um, it really puts you into that kid's mindset, as I said. Like, there's a really great scene where the kids are looking under the bed for something, or one of the kids is looking under the bed for something. Like, that's a really, really good scene. Really builds up the tension, builds up the suspense. Really puts you in that mind frame. Um, and it's very relatable. Like, the kids in this, like, I feel like... It's not that you get character development, really. There's not a lot of character development with any of the characters. Like, hell, you don't even really see what anyone in the film looks like. Like, you get, like, little glimpses of people here and there. But you really have no idea what these kids look like. You really have no idea what these parents look like. But you really feel like a kid in this film. You feel like the, you know, the mute third kid that is with them in this situation. It puts you right there. And the kids are doing exactly what kids would probably be doing if they find out that they're basically trapped in this house and their parents are gone. They're setting up camp together. Um, they're making sure each other are safe. You know, they make up their little area with their stuff, like their toys. And it really makes you... It, at least me, like it made me feel like I was a kid. It made me feel all those childhood fears that I felt when I was a kid, either when I was home alone or when I was not home alone, when I just felt alone, when I just thought I was alone, when I knew my parents were right down the hallway, but that hallway seems like it's like a hundred miles long. Um, it makes you, it re I know I've said this like many times, but it really, really puts you, if you allow the film to do so, it really puts you back into that headspace, back into that mind space of when you were a kid. I've never felt so bizarrely comforted and uncomfortable with a horror film, like in the same situation before, because especially early on, it's a very comfortable film to me it makes me feel like I'm watching one of my home videos like from when I was a kid just the video quality what the kids are doing the way they're reacting watching cartoons playing with Legos um one of the first things you see in the film is it pops up on the screen the date it says 1995 and I audibly said quiet enough for you know only my wife heard me the other people in the theater didn't hear me but I audibly said when the screen popped up 1995 I was just like masterpiece <laughs> just like legend um absolutely perfect um again i've never felt so like bizarrely at home with a film that has creeped me out as much as skinner creeped me out and just talking about the theater experience in general like I was there, my wife was there, obviously. It was like a smaller-ish theater, like obviously they were playing the big budget movies down the hallway. So we were in like the little like 20 person theater. Um, it wasn't completely sold out, but there were quite a few people in there. We were the only people, it was like five rows. There was one row in front of us that was empty. My wife and I were in a row, but every seat in like the three rows behind us was like full. But there was 
like it was like a stadium thing. So like the first row of the stadium was empty. The second row was what we were in. And then the three rows back were jam packed at the bottom of like the stadium. There were like the two like shitty rows that no one really sits in. And those were empty too. So really we were in front. There were people behind us and there were like three to four empty rows that were in front of us, including the ones that weren't in the stadium portion. So it really felt like we were alone in this situation because we didn't see the people behind us. We didn't hear the people behind us, really. In fact, in, in the entire duration of the film, because even going into the film, like, I, and even up until this point, I don't read any reviews, really, or watch any reviews of what people have to say. The opinions that I see are just stuff I see on Letterboxd from my friends, stuff that comes recommended to me on Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, whatever. I don't go and, like, seek out a bunch of opinions about this. But I had heard going in, there were probably going to be some walkouts. But thankfully, no one in our theater walked out at all. And the only time my immersion was like broken by other people in the theater was someone got up to go to the bathroom once. That was the only sort of interruption that happened. There weren't any massive walkouts or anything like that. And everyone was kind of bizarrely silent except for the few scary moments where the, I felt like some of the crowd was actually getting into it with us. There was definitely people at the end of the film that were kind of groaning and apologizing to their significant others for making them go and watch this with them. Um, but for the most part, I think a lot of the people in the theater with me were kind of into the experience along with me. But it was one of the most memorable experiences in the theater I've ever had because it felt almost as if my wife and in there were my wife and I were in there by ourselves. And the only other time I felt as scared as I have in a movie theater like that in that environment in my adult life was going to see Paranormal Activity 3 when me and the person I was with at the time were the only ones in the small crappy theater where the AC was blasting and turning on and off every once in a while, making you hear every creak and every crack and every little noise that was going on in the theater that you don't hear about in an old theater. Because normally your films are very loud and you're hearing lots of things, but when it's a quiet film, when it's a horror film, there are a lot of things that you're going to hear just like the old building just like making noise, like leaky pipes and shit like that. Um, so Paranormal Activity 3 and this film are always going to hold a special place within my soul of theater-going experiences watching a film. Skidamarink, Paranormal Activity 3. That's good company for Skidamarink to be with Paranormal Activity 3 with me as a theater experience, because that's one of the best theater experiences I've ever had, similar to this. This was one of the scariest theater experiences I have ever had. This is the most unsafe I've ever felt in a theater. And I watch horror films all the time. But really being able to buy into something like this is something truly special. And again, not a lot of people are getting it. Not a lot of people are on the same wavelength that I am with this. Everyone's saying, oh, it's boring. Oh, it's this and that. But for me, I was in the perfect mind space. I was in the perfect environment i was in the perfect atmosphere and this film's atmosphere is absolutely unmatched this film has incredible atmosphere incredible mood really draws you in if you're not going in with a negative mindset if you are like me and again i i just hope that if you are watching this film you give it a fair shot um and we'll talk a little bit more about this the audio is bad the video is bad. It's intentionally bad. It's meant to feel like you're a child. It's meant to make you see things maybe you're not seeing. It's meant to make what you don't see scarier. I guess my question to a lot of the people that are not giving it legitimate you know, a, not giving it a legitimate chance. If you're giving it a legitimate chance, I'm not talking to you. The people that are not truly within themselves giving it a legitimate chance who and who hated it. Like, what are you looking for? What were you expecting this film to be? This film was made for $15,000. 
shot in the director's childhood home with like a couple people. Not a big budget. Minimal special effects. Intentionally bad audio and video. I just don't know what you could be expecting. What you could be wanting to gain out of this. Which is why like, I just want people to go in with an open mind. Go in as with a clear head as possible. I do not recommend taking any sort of edibles or anything like that before watching this film. Um, just watch the film as it is. Put yourself in that 1995 headspace if you were a kid in 1995. Pretend you're a kid in 1995. No cell phones. No other distractions. You're a kid who has to go to bed and has to fall asleep. Or try to fall asleep. Don't actually fall asleep during the film. But pretend that you are a kid. You're alone with nothing but your own thoughts. No one to protect you. No one to save you. It's just you and your sibling. Maybe it's your little sibling. Maybe it's your older sibling. But you're both young. Both of you are not doing anything to be able to combat whatever demonic forces or whatever ghosts or whatever creaks in the night. Whatever is coming to get you, you can't do anything about it. If you're watching it at home, which I'm, I'm imagining a lot of you will be if you're watching it on Shutter, but if you can see it in theaters, I would say see it in theaters too. But kind of act like the kids, man. Camp out on your couch. Put up a blanket fort, man. Watch this in that environment. I can't imagine a more perfect atmosphere than that to watch this. Um, one of the critiques I'm seeing people say on Letterboxd and TikTok and whatever, that it's way too long. And I don't agree like, I slightly agree. So, like, I think maybe you could have shaved maybe, like, 10, 15 minutes off. 10, 15 minutes may be too long, right? But I'm seeing everyone saying this this would have been a perfect short film. You could, everything the director was saying, you could have done that in 15, 20 minutes. Could have been a short film. But you can't buy into the atmosphere. You're not going to feel the way that you feel with a short film. I strongly disagree that it should be a short film. You need that time to draw you in. The film drawing you in and immersing you is what makes it scary. Yeah, you, I mean, you can make anything a five to ten minute short film, but it's not going to have the impact that a full feature doing it in this style does. I mean, there are some films that work better as short films, but that's because the film's when they're made into a full length film, it sort of loses the message, right? Like lights out and, you know, stuff like that. They're like, oh yeah, the short film's better. But the short film doesn't really have any substance. Like if you were to actually do it as a full length film, like in a good, better, correct way, then yeah, like the short film, like it's like six minutes, there's a couple jump scares, then it's done. If they would have done that with Skin and Rink, no one would be talking about it. And regardless, even if it's getting a lot of the bad press that it is getting, it's just bringing more eyes onto it. I mean, as I said, it's made like almost $2 million already in theaters, and it's going to make more now that it's on Shudder, I would imagine. I'm assuming they're getting a pretty big deal from Shudder. Um, I'm assuming that even though it's on Shudder, I'm assuming it will have some sort of home release that I'm hoping people get. It'd be hard. Like if they were to release this like on a VHS, like that'd be pretty tight. Um, but regardless... Um, I kind of lost my train of thought there, but you guys get what I'm saying. Like you need to really give, give the film the effort that the film is giving you, even though the film is very cheaply made, there was a lot of heart put into it. There was a lot of, you know, passion behind it. It's not like, oh, they just threw something together. Like this is something that was very, although it is experimental, you can tell that there is like a method to it, right? You can tell that the director knew what he was doing. He wasn't just like filling the time for an hour and a half. Yeah, it's an hour and a half. It's actually a little bit longer than an hour and a half. But you can tell it's not just nonsense. There is genuine suspense. There's genuine thrills. It's one of those films where you almost want to look away the entire time. Or maybe you do look away the entire time. 
just waiting for something to happen because it's so unnerving that you don't want to look. And even though there's nothing, there might not be anything there. It's what could be there that scares you. It know, it's knowing that any moment something could be there. Something could be on that screen. And sometimes there is. When, when there is, like, hot damn. But it's really about getting you into the moment and getting you invested for those moments. Um, like I said, it makes you feel like you're a child, like you're under the blanket. There's a scary voice at some point in the film, and this has been in, you know, pictures online, so I don't consider this a spoiler. You've seen, you know, people making artwork of it with the text under it that says, put the knife in your eye. It really puts you into that mindset where, at least when I was a kid, I used to hear shit like that all the time. And it was usually nothing, but it was my mind playing tricks on me. It reminds me of when, the entire film reminds me of when you're closing your eyes as a child and you see the speckles, right? And you're hearing things in your room. When I was a kid, I was scared of literally everything. So this film hit double for me um, in comparison to some other things going on. And while I'm talking about this creepy thing, I noticed that there's a UPS man walking up to my house. I'm hoping he does not ring the doorbell because of course I'm in the middle of a recording and I think he's walking away. Yes, he dropped something off at my door and now he's walking away. So I have a package. So we might have to do a little bit of an unboxing if the package is for me on the podcast. Maybe at the very, very end, I will go and get the package and let you guys know if it was for me or if it was for my wife. If it's for me... It's fair game to open it. If it's for her, can't do it on the show, guys. I apologize. I would never do that. Um, but it sh- but the as I was saying, it shows you anything in your house can be scary. When I was a kid, I would see a toy like across the room, um, like in my bedroom, and like you would sort of envision in the middle of the night, your mind starts playing tricks on you. Maybe you see the toy moving a little bit, stuff like that. I would see pictures on the wall moving but it's just my mind playing tricks on me it feels like that it feels like your mind is playing tricks on you throughout this entire film and like i said i tried not to read anything online the only real stuff i saw was on twitter and letterbox so i really tried to go into blank into it as a blank of a mindset as possible the only person i knew that i saw in person who had seen the film before me was midnight miles the midnight mandroid Of course. So he was saying the same things that I'm kind of saying right now. Like, kind of go in, like, don't have any distractions, right? You need to go in, and the film needs to be what the film is. And there's a lot of, you know, I guess, like, in the film, there's a lot of... It doesn't explain a lot, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And... That might be a reason why a lot of people are not liking it, is it doesn't really explain to you what is happening. Um, And even when you see images online, like you see like a creepy something in the background, you see that little play phone or whatever. Everyone's like, what does it mean? Like, what is actually going on here? Why are they watching these public domain cartoons? Like, what does it mean? What does it mean? And the director, I hope, never tells us what it means. I hope it's a David Lynch thing. It's like, oh, Eraserhead's my most spiritual film. Elaborate on that. No. I hope that it's always just left up to your interpretation and left up to the audience to try to figure out what is going on in this film. And I hope all of you guys are out there giving it a chance. Again, this is a little bit of a hard review to do. um, But overall, like, I really love the film. I know I might be in the minority on that, but I really loved Skinnermarink. Like, I don't think it's in my top 10 or 50 even favorite films of all time or 100 favorite films of all time or anything, but I really loved it. I think that it is very... It's going to be a very good cult film, right? Um, I don't think it's ever going to reach the levels of Blair Witch Project or the first Paranormal Activity or stuff like that where people are really making a lot of internet buzz about a film. and But I think it's sort of a modern version of that, but I don't think it's going to reach that level. I don't think that it's really going to hit the milestones that that did, but I do think it is a very good, very solid, scary, atmospheric film that doesn't tell you what it's about. But there's a lot of different ways you can interpret this, right? There's a lot of different messages that you can come across with this film right 
Um, the parents, the dad's gone, obviously. That's in the log line. Dad isn't there. So it's like, what happened to dad? Where, why are all the doors gone? What's up with the windows? Why is this voice telling me to put a knife in my eye? Why is there creepy voices telling me to come upstairs? There's no one in my house. It's just me and my sister. Why is there another voice coming? What is the film about? What are we doing? Why are we here? Is it a demonic house? Maybe. There could be demonic entities in the house. Are there ghosts? Could be. Could not be. Are the kids going through some sort of trauma, whether it be emotional or physical? It could be. There's a, a point in the film where it says a certain number of days later, right? And that, that, that it, I guess that's a spoiler, but it doesn't really matter because it doesn't really tie into anything, right? It says how many days that this has been going on. Is the kid, I saw someone say the kid could be, I guess this is a spoiler. So proceed with caution. But is the kid in a coma? Because early on in the film, the kid injures himself. So maybe the injury was worse than we thought. Maybe the whole film is him recovering in his coma and the nightmares he's having in his things. Is it about parents getting divorced, right? The dad leaves. As I said, that's literally in the log line of the film. Is it children coping with a divorce or parents that aren't there all the time? It could be. Is it just a nightmare? Your mind playing tricks on you. Stuff that I've talked about in this show already. Your mind playing tricks on you or your mind as a child playing tricks on you is it about just the normal things that go bump in the night when you're a kid things that aren't scary turning out to be scary things that you hear in the middle of the night that aren't actually there that's the closest that what i think the film is about right i've talked about this throughout this that's what i think the film is about i don't know if that's what the film is about Just childhood fear. There's nothing you can do. There's nowhere for you to go. But eventually, you can wake up from your nightmare and your parent tells you to just go back to sleep. That's what I think Skinner Marink is about. I think it is just about being a kid. The things that scare you. The things what you don't see being scarier. I think it's about every childhood fear, the fear of being alone, the fear of maybe your parents aren't there, the fear of maybe your parents did leave. Maybe there is no way out of this situation. Just every fear that you could have possibly had is enveloped into this film. That's how I feel about this film. And as someone who was a very scared child, I really loved the film. This film hit me in a way that films haven't hit me too often, right? This film really hit me on that personal level that very few films, even horror films, have done. I can probably name them, like, on my fingers, on films that have really hit me the way that this film hit me. Like, as I said, like, towards the beginning of this, I've never felt so comfortable during the beginning portions of this never felt so comfortable to the point where maybe like I'm drifting in and out of my own nightmares maybe my mind as I'm watching this film is playing tricks on me not that I was falling asleep in the film because I wasn't but it puts you in that zone and what I actually see on the screen is that what's actually on the screen Or is that my mind in the theater playing tricks on me, what I'm seeing on the screen right now? This film truly is something special. I hope that, as much as I want to see this Kyle Edward Ball make big budget films, because I think he has the talent to do it, I hope that he makes more weird shit like this. 
You know what I mean? I hope he sticks to his niche if he does decide to do more films to do them something like this. I hope he puts this film on VHS because I will buy it instantly. But I don't know, man. There's not much else for me to say about it. Again, it's kind of a weird film to talk about. A lot of people hated it. A lot of people loved it. As I said, my letterbox scores were all over the place. I gave it a solid four. Uh, maybe if I watch it again, now that it is on Shutter, maybe I will bump it up. Maybe I'll bump it down. This is based only on one viewing of the film. Um, I hope to, that I do watch it again. I hope you guys watch it. I hope you give it an open mind. I would love to hear what your thoughts about Skinamarink are. So if you are watching this over on YouTube, please leave me a comment down below and tell me what you thought about Skinamarink, whether you loved it, you hated it. Um, just let me know. I'm very curious what everyone thinks about this film. But if you don't give it an open chance, I don't want to hear your opinions. So reach out to me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, however you guys want to reach out to me if you're listening over on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening on. I hope you guys enjoyed this show. Um, again, it's kind of a weird one. I hope you guys enjoyed what I had to say. I hope you found it informative. I hope I didn't spoil too much about the film. I only said like a couple things that are a little spoilery, so nothing really too major. Um, that phone's creepy as shit. Um, the best tweet of all time that I've ever seen is the one where it's like, you mind watching him while I go smoke and it's just a picture of that phone. Um, I think the film's great. Good, genuine jump scares. Good, genuine, creepy imagery. Just everything that I love. And of course, I love all aspects of horror. Um, but this weird experimental kind of horror, when it actually works and it actually works well... Is something that I'm really interested in. So I really loved Skinamarink. And I want to know what you guys think. As I said, reach out to me. I'm going to wrap up this show and ride off into the sunset. As Stone Cold Steve Austin loves to say at the ending of his shows. Which I hope he starts making more shows. But that's besides the point. But regardless, I'm going to sign out. I'm hoping to see you guys soon in another episode of Buddy's House of Horror. I'm hoping to make a bunch more episodes coming out very, very soon. This is sort of my tester, right? I'm trying to get back into the recording zone, and this is the first step into that. I know I'm going to be doing a video about all of the horror films I saw in 2022, wrapping up that series. I want to do more interviews. I want to have a lot of more interesting things happening on this show in 2023, and I look forward to doing that all with you guys. But the first step with that is done, and moving on to the next step is ending this show and planning for the next one. So I'm going to sign off again. Go see Skinamarink. Let me know what you guys think. And I will see you guys back again for another episode of Buddy's House of Horror coming very, very soon. So take care and stay spooky. Oh, and an update for anyone who was interested. The package was actually for my wife. So no unboxing this time. But again, I'll see you guys next time. Stay spooky, everyone.